Hey, it's Jeff Salzenstein here. And this hand right here, this is the hand that you want to be focusing on your forehand. And it's actually your non-dominant hand. I'm going to be playing as a lefty right now because I am a lefty. This is the hand that's messing people up. And I know that's weird because you're normally swinging with your dominant hand, but I'm going to explain to you why this is happening right now and how you can improve your forehand. So let's get started right now. When you swing on your forehand, you must be aware of what your hand is doing, your offhand. You must be aware of it. So I want you to take a look at what I'm doing with my forehand at the end of the swing. See, I'm catching the racket. Most players don't do that, okay? Most players, with their offhand, it's doing all different types of things. It's here, it's here. When they swing, it goes up here. It's like, uh, it's got a mind of its own. It just does what it feels like doing. But here's the thing. This offhand is connected to your body, and the body is hitting the ball. It's not the racket. Your body's doing the work, and you want your arms and your hands and your body to be connected. This is a holistic approach to hitting a forehand. So, how do we do this? Instead of swinging and having our hand here, or here, or here, we focus on the first move where we get the off hand out here. We, the hand is here. So if I, were to, if I were to drop the racket and just put my hands in this position, they're together, they're connected, like this. So I don't have one hand here, and I don't have one hand here, or here. It's connected, like I'm holding a ball, right here. Simple as that. So you want to move your shoulders, your trunk, and your body so that your hands are in this position. Now, I don't even talk about moving the shoulders or the trunk. I know I just mentioned it, but I don't talk about that when I teach. What I focus on is can you just, from the ready position, can you just move your hands to here? It's pretty hard to move your hands to here without turning, right? If I just face you and go like this, it feels weird. So I'm just putting my hands in this position as if I were going to pick up a ball and put it here. Okay, so I'm in the ready position. I pick up the ball and I put it here. And now I'm ready to go. My hands are connected. So you want to make sure that your hands are connected at the beginning. Now, if they're connected at the beginning, you have a greater chance of it being connected at the contact point and at the end doesn't mean it's always going to happen, but there's a good chance of it. So you're in this position right here. And when you swing, you finish in this position. So at all times, look at, look at the offhand. If I swing and my hand is about right here, it's still pretty close to the, the hand that's making contact, right? It's here. And then when I finish, they come back together again. So if I'm in my ready position, my hands are together. I separate, but I'm still pretty close, right? My racket's not back like this. I'm not disconnecting, I'm staying connected. So you could even keep your hands about six feet, six inches apart right here, six to 12 inches. First move right here. And when you go to swing, yes, the hands will separate, but this hand's going to stay steady. It's going to stay right here and it's going to stay steady and it starts to pull in towards the body. I'm just explaining it, doesn't mean you need to think about it. It pulls in towards the body, but the cool thing is if you're going to catch the racket, you're going to get connected at the end. This is about getting connected. You're getting disconnected on your forehand. First move, keep your hands connected. Keep your hands connected at contact. Keep your hands connected at the end. Now, the way that I teach it is, hey, make a good first move with your hands and then just finish at the end. Then you don't have to think about anything in between and you won't see as much weird stuff happening with your offhand. If you know that your racket, you're going to get connected right here, if you know that's going to happen, it's going to be difficult to go like this and then back up again. It's going to be difficult to go like this and then come back again. You know that you have to get the racket and the hand here, and you know you have to get this hand here. So basically, look what I'm doing. I'm just here, look at my hand, and I'm here. How far does it move? Maybe three feet or four feet? This is the forehand for you. 
If you want to drill in your fundamentals, do this all day. Make your swing more compact, not as long, not as big, not as crazy. You know, you don't have to go over the shoulder like this. I know you see the pros doing this, but if you haven't mastered what your offhand is doing, don't bother with that stuff. Do exactly what I'm telling you to do in this lesson. And if you don't believe me, it's okay. Just go try it. And if it makes you feel connected, it gives you a better forehand, then you're on the right track. When I was playing on the Pro Tour, there were times that my arm got so heavy, I could feel my hand doing this at the end. So the way that I could fix it is I knew at the end, I just needed to get my hands up, right? So if I'm tight and I'm doing this, I can actually swing and know that, oh, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna finish above my shoulder here. See, I'm above this shoulder, easy. I might take some flack that I'm making people catch the racket and then not even finish over the shoulder. Some other coaches might think I'm crazy. They might even think the follow through doesn't matter. But I think you should just go try it. And then if it works, it doesn't matter what people think. It's what you think. It's what works for you. And if it doesn't work, that's okay too. Maybe there's another tip you can find that's easier than the one I'm showing you. I haven't really found it yet that if you make a good move, and your hand is relaxed and your arm is relaxed and you finish like this, I believe you can hit great forehands. Now, what I've noticed is when I work with players, especially when I've worked with club players, is they actually have a hard time catching the racket at the end. They'll catch it here. They have a really hard time because they're probably gripping and trying so hard. They have a hard time just laying the racket in the hand like this with the fingers on the throat and the thumb on the throat. I see players catching it on the grip and then they're too close to the ball. If you catch it on the throat, you'll create more distance and more space. All right, I see that right here more than I see this, the spacing. I also see people swing, they get to here and then they catch. It's rare than they catch it early enough. I want you to see if you can catch the racket. Look at where I caught the racket. I know this is crazy, but it works. Catch it here and then actually bring it Bring it to that position. See that? I'm catching it out here and then I'm bringing it to the position instead of here and then catching it. It's all about getting as connected as possible with your hands. See what I'm doing here? I'm here, catch, and then I bring it to here. This is an exaggeration principle. I'm not doing this when I actually play. This is about building your foundation. And I always want players to build their foundation first. This will only work if your arms and your hands are relaxed. If you're really tight, it's, it's not gonna, going to feel great. So you gotta be real relaxed, very relaxed, and you just need to get to this spot right here. This will fix your crazy off hand and your crazy off arm here, okay? If you have a habit of being here, it's going, you're, gonna, you're gonna wanna catch it here. So the first move is key and the follow through is key. First move and follow through. You get those two things down with your off hand, guarantee your forehand's going to improve. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, let other people know that we are committed to helping players all over the world with their forehands and the rest of their games. Now, there are some big forehand mistakes that players are making. We've got a link in the description below. We also have a link on this video somewhere. Click it and I'll give you some more tips to help you fix your forehand if you're really struggling with it. You're probably making some of these mistakes. So go ahead and click below or somewhere in this video. I look forward to seeing you at the next one.